Nice throw, Ben. You playing catch with Dad? <laughs> You're a good one, sweet Maya. <laughs> hey, Mom. Hey, Toad, what's up? You playing? Uh, no, I'm watching. You're watching? How's basketball going? Okay, Pretty I'll try. Good. Going good? You like it more than you thought? Yeah. <laughs> what is up, you guys? I'm headed out here to the chicken coop to grab the eggs. I'm trying to get in the habit of coming out every evening. We are having nights like right at freezing or right above freezing. And, and truly, the eggs probably won't freeze until it's significantly below freezing just because the body heat of the chickens will keep it warm enough to keep them from freezing solid at least. But if you're keeping chickens in a place where it does freeze, it is a good habit to get into to come out and get the eggs because if they freeze, they crack <laughs> and then you lose them. Step over this fence since it's off. Hey guys, hello. All right, pretty good little egg haul there. So one of the questions that comes up a lot this time of year to me as a chicken keeper and somebody who uh, shares information about homesteading is why are my chickens not laying? And so I kind of wanted to just go over that with you guys today and help troubleshoot if your chickens have stopped laying. Uh, there are a variety of reasons for this. And the first one being this time of year, it's fall, we're going into winter. Um, sometimes chickens will stop laying through the winter. Now it's not all the time. Like my chickens are laying full force, high capacity, just the most that they ever lay right now. And you know, I've had some people tell me that that their chickens have always th laid through the winter and I've had other people tell me their chickens have always stopped laying through the winter. I have not been able to pin that down to any sort of like breeds or keeping care, any of that stuff. But it is true that when chickens are getting less than 14 hours a day of solid daylight, when the days get shorter, that a lot of times that can uh, hinder them laying on a regular schedule. Actually a few more eggs down here. And one thing you can do if that's the case, if the reason why your chickens aren't laying is because they're not getting enough daylight because it's winter, you can put artificial light in their coop and put it on a timer, um, either like a string of Christmas lights or just a single light bulb. And a lot of times that will force lay. It's kind of a controversial topic. Some people feel very strongly about giving chickens a break in the winter and not putting light in. We have run light in our coop in the winter before, but I actually think there are other things that you can troubleshoot first because it might not actually be the light that's the problem. And essentially hens are born with the number of eggs they are going to lay in their life. So by forcing a chicken to lay through the winter with artificial light, you're not gonna get more eggs overall, you're just gonna get them sooner. And it really is, you know, it just comes down to a personal choice of how you wanna to run your farm. I have put light in my coop before, but it was more because we were having um, a long period without eggs. And I'm actually okay going a couple of months in the winter if they stop laying then, if they molt. And it turned out that our issue when we were having problems back then was actually, I don't think it was really the light. I think it was something else. So these ladies are getting ready to go to bed for the night. Um, your average chicken that you're going to keep on a farm, a common domestic breed, they're going to lay eggs for about three years, um, four, they can lay eggs, you know, longer than four, and you'll hear the occasional story of being someone saying that they had chickens older than that that still laid. But they're really going to peak in that first few years. That's where you're going to get the most consistent lay. And they do often lose a lot of their feathers at the end of the season, like um, at the end of fall and that's called the molt and a lot of times they do stop laying while, while they're molting and then they start to grow in new feathers and they begin laying again. You can help them through that if they stop laying during a molt by making sure that they're getting a really balanced feed by supplementing them with some sort of protein because that's going to help them as they are recovering their feathers. So what are some of the things that could be happening aside from a shortage of light to keep your chickens from laying? There are two main things that I have found to almost always be the culprits. And when I have helped troubleshoot, when I go to people's houses and I start talking to them, there are two things that I check for first. I need to catch a chicken to show you guys how to look for this. Hmm. 
Shall I run around and get it or should I go for one that's in the coop? Oh, there's a couple eggs in here too. All right, my lovely assistant is going to help me demonstrate how to check your chicken for mites. Mites are a really common occurrence in backyard hens. They can come from wild birds. Um, it's not your fault if your chickens have mites. However, keeping a clean coop really does help. Since we've been using this mobile coop, which ours is built off of Justin Rhodes' Chickshaw design, but um, any sort of mobile coop where you're not having a buildup, I do think that really helps with not having mites. Basically, keeping a clean coop helps a lot. Another thing you can do is provide some sort of dust bath and put diatomaceous earth in it. Okay, when you hold a chicken upside down and let the blood rush to their head, they kind of pass out a little bit. Um, and this is what you're gonna do to check your chicken for mites. You wanna turn them upside down and very just carefully spread the feathers away from um, the skin. Uh, she doesn't have mites, so I'm not gonna be able to show you what they look like, but whenever you spread this, the feathers and you see this skin right here, you'll see these tiny little bugs crawling along the skin if they have mites. They can be red, they can be white, or kind of like a dark brown. Thank you, lady. All right, well, she didn't love that. It is that easy, you just grab hold of a chicken. It's easiest if you come out at night when they're roosting, because then you don't have to fight them or catch them or stress them out, especially if your chickens are not snuggly. Um, but I just couldn't shoot a video at night, so I had to show you while they were still alive. Now, the treatment for mites, if you wanna go organically, is gonna be like diatomaceous earth, providing that bath. And what you can do is take diatomaceous earth and put it in the foot of a pantyhose, tie it off, and it makes like a little duster. And when your chickens are sleeping, you can come out and take them off of the roost, turn them upside down, just like you saw me do, and dust their bottoms and then dust underneath their wings with that diatomaceous earth. Get your coop really, really clean. If chickens have mites, they will stop laying. And a lot of times I've talked to people who have been like, wow, my chickens have stopped laying for a long period of time. At any time during the year. And the very first thing that I check for on the bird itself is mites. And I do find we used to deal with mites a lot before we went to mobile coops, back when we had a static coop, because it was just really hard to get the coop clean enough to keep that from being an issue. Now, the next thing, again, I am a big believer in moving chickens around. This isn't always the case with a static coop. The next thing that will make your chickens stop laying is if they have wet feet. So you'll notice here, this chicken coop is on nice dry ground that's not muddy. Having any animals cooped up in a small space over a period of time, they're gonna wear down the grass, they're gonna kill the grass, and you're gonna end up with really muddy ground. There are other benefits of keeping the ground where your chickens walk dry and clean, and that is clean eggs. If it rains here, my eggs will be dirty because they're walking around and the ground is wet. And even though we don't have muddy buildup, it's still wet. And so they take those dirty feet, they go walk on these eggs in the nest box when they go to lay, and you end up with muddy, poopy eggs. But if you keep the ground dry where you have your birds, they don't have wet feet. And for whatever reason, I've noticed that that really affects how often and effectively they lay. Now, you don't have the option of doing a movable coop to keep the ground dry. Laying down straw, making sure that you keep that bedding dry by laying down more layers. You can look into deep litter bedding. That's a really effective way to keep the ground dry and also build compost from your birds. The dry feet tip is actually something that I learned back when we did have our static coop and we were dealing with a long period of time with our birds not laying and we had put the light in the coop like people said. We had added pepper and different things to the diet of the birds like people had said. Nothing was working and I had checked for mites and we didn't have mites and someone said, hey, if you, if you get their feet dry and get them walking on a place that's dry and make sure it stays dry where they're not on the mud, they'll start laying again and they absolutely did. The last thing to really consider and I kind of touched on this with molting that you can make sure that they have protein in their diet but sufficient nutrition is really important for 
for chickens to continue producing. We do feed our chickens like a balanced layer mix and while it is great to give your chickens like you can give them scratch especially in the winter it does help them generate some extra body heat. You can give them treats you'll see like the little mealworms and black fly larvae and all those like special chicken treats that you find marketed to chickens. Those are all great. They can be an extra source of protein. They're a really good treat and if you want sweet chickens teaching them that you come bearing gifts is definitely a good way to get friendly birds. Uh, but those things alone like chicken scratch alone is not a balanced diet. So if you're just feeding your chickens cracked corn, if you're just feeding your chickens scratch, you may run into issues with irregular laying or birds that might not be as healthy. Again, there's always a story of somebody that's like, hey, I raised chickens for 30 years on nothing but corn. And while that may be the case in some cases, it is a baseline to give your chickens a balanced diet. And truly, we have had periods, like when we first moved here, our chickens were free ranging. We would put feed down, they wouldn't even eat it because they were getting so much in the height of the summer by free ranging and eating lots of bugs. And they were still actually laying at that point. They were just hiding them from us. Which brings me to my last point. If your chickens are in a really contained area like this, obviously you know whether they're laying or not. But it goes without saying, if you are free ranging your chickens at all, all, you can never assume that they've completely stopped laying. You always have to assume that they've stopped laying where you can find it because there is nothing that chickens like more it seems than a good old Easter egg hunt. I can't tell you how many times I have found clutches of eggs. I mean in the most random of places because they decided to lay them where they could potentially keep them. They'll do that because, you know, especially if they're preparing to like go broody and sit on a clutch, they'll go off and lay them somewhere else so that they can sit on them. We've ended up with a few chicks over the years that way too. The chickens decided to, to go hatch some eggs out and we were letting them free range. And so, you know, when you have a lot of chickens, one can go missing and you might not really notice it. And until she comes back with a handful of babies in tow. This is a pretty good haul of eggs. Actually, I was thinking about it. I didn't go get them last night right before dark. I went and got them like middle of the afternoon because we had stuff going on last night. So some of these were laid yesterday afternoon and evening and then all day today but I'm trying to shift normally I get them every morning and I'm shifting now as it's getting colder to collect them right before dark um, to make sure that there aren't any eggs sitting in the coop which brings me to one more little chicken care tidbit that I felt like I would throw out there as we enter into cool weather um, people worry a lot about their chickens in the cold weather and actually they're very very hardy animals obviously we get to talk to people who are homesteading all over the place and I regularly speak to people who live in extremely cold places like in Minnesota and parts of Canada and places where it gets like just so below freezing that it could easily kill a human if they were out in it for very long and chickens are fine as long as they have a good closed-in space deep litter bedding is a way to add warmth to their coop through the winter by just piling that bedding up because what's going to happen is it's going to start composting which generates heat but in most cases it's actually best not to put supplemental heat in your coops um, it, it can cause more problems with ventilation and it can actually be more of a detriment to them obviously a lot of times people are putting things like heat lamps and those can be a real fire hazard and so putting putting heat in your coop for the most part is overkill and not necessary necessary and it is an unnecessary risk. So rest assured that most likely your chickens are completely fine. I, I mean I'm completely unconcerned about them here because it does not get cold enough to bother our animals. It could freeze eggs maybe. <laughs> Maya and the kids are down here on the swing. This is such a peaceful time of day on the farm. It's pretty high there. <laughs> you know one of the things that I struggle with when my chickens have not been laying very well, which that's the last thing that I forgot to mention. If they go through any sort of like major transition, like you move them specifically, um, that can also cause your chickens to take a break from laying. And that break can be anywhere between a few days and a couple of months. And it's just the shock of transition 
And what's crazy is, is that I've had chickens that I moved onto my farm from somewhere else and they never skipped a beat, never missed a day, and they continue to lay the whole time. And then others that I move them from one coop to the other on the same property and they quit laying for two months. But what happens is, is I get into the habit of not having eggs. Now, if my birds aren't laying, I will continue to buy eggs from another source. But I don't like to buy a lot of them. Basically, I'll buy enough to use them in like recipes, but we just don't eat a whole lot of eggs when our birds aren't laying. Just because with all my kids, like we could easily go through a lot of eggs, and we do when our chickens are laying a lot, but for me, when they start laying a lot again, it's like I have to remind myself in meal planning, like, oh wait, I have a lot of eggs to use. I'll, as far as excess eggs go, when a lot are coming in like that, um, I have frozen them before, I have freeze dried them before. Uh, both of those work really well. One thing that I've not done that's kind of on my list to try is water glassing, which is something that a lot of people have mentioned playing around with, but I've been reading a lot lately, like World War II era stuff. Um, I love the show. It's called Wartime Farm. It's the it's a series, it's a BBC series, and they did like Tudor Monastery Farm and Edwardian Farm, Victorian Farm, and they did Wartime Farm. And it's really neat. And I can't remember who is that where I saw it, but one of those shows, I like to watch that whole era of stuff. And they showed water glassing on that. And so I'm thinking right now, because I have a lot of eggs, I have these and <laughs> this basket, and I've been giving them away, but this is just like the excess that I haven't used over the last week. They've been laying a lot. So I'm gonna have to figure out some more creative ways to preserve eggs and remind myself we need to get back into the gear of using eggs, like eating them for breakfast every morning and doing a lot of very egg-centric recipes because I'm kind of out of the habit of it because we went like two and a half months with hardly any eggs after we moved. All right guys, well, I'm gonna say goodbye to you for now. I hope you enjoyed this chickeny video. Thank you for hanging out with me this evening. I bless you, until next time.